Hey there, welcome to Sin Seeker. My name's Luke. What I'm going to cover today very quickly is global transposition. Uh, I've covered this in a couple other videos, but it was always in conjunction with a few other things. This is going to be just a short video showing very quickly how to map pitch controls to a, an external controller and then use the scale plugin to allow you to take your Berlin school patterns that are playing and transpose them around within your key which basically lets you apply chord progressions to your patterns as they're going. Okay. So I have three voices here, voice one, two, and three. They are a couple synths and a little bass. Okay. Now within each of these channels is the synth stuff, which is not important right now. There is a scale plugin that's mapped to what the current scale is. Uh, for this production, I am doing it in C minor. I know I use C minor a lot, but it's just a convenient sort of bass. You can use whatever key you like, but set your scale plugin to match that and do that for every voice. So all three instruments have a scale plugin set to C minor, all right? In front of the scale plugin, there's a pitch control, all right? This is a MIDI plugin in Ableton that basically allows you to transpose pitches up and down. So put that in front of the scale plugin and set it to zero for all of them, okay? Now, in order to do this, you actually need two controllers, okay? You need the controller that you play with, note input for, you know, I when I play, I'm gonna play on the push, right? But you need a third-party controller. I've got a little, um, what is this, a K-board uh, from Keith McMillan Instruments very nice little two octave controller. Uh, I've also done this with a Launchpad uh, Pro Mark III that has note mode, uh, but you can do it with any controller that'll send MIDI notes. And you wanna get that in and mapped into Ableton so that when you hit a key, it comes through and is captured by Ableton, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to map these keys to the pitch control plugin for each of our instruments, okay? And this is how we control our sort of global transposition. So what you're going to do is go to each of the three instruments, all right? And you're going to go to that pitch control. And we're gonna hit Command M, which brings up the purple mapping functions. This says, okay, these are all the things you can map to external MIDI controllers, like this little Keith McMillan keyboard, all right? And you're gonna to go to the first instrument's pitch control and select it, and then press and hold down the range of your keyboard, okay? And note how, what that is. This is a two octave keyboard, okay? So it goes from C, there's a middle C, and then there's an upper C, all right? And you'll see that that is captured here in the mappings. It says notes from C2 colon C4. That means we've mapped from C2 to C4 to the pitch controls pitch parameter. And then there's these range areas. You wanna set that to negative 12 and positive 12. And what that means is when I press these keys, of which there are 12 in the lower octave and 12 in the upper octave, it will take those notes and map them to this pitch control from the low octave 12 to the upper octave 12. Now, if I hit Command M to close that, you'll notice now on this pitch control, when I press keys, here's middle C, I'm zero. And as I go down the keyboard, the pitch knob goes down with me. Okay, all the way down to minus 12 at the low C, and it can go from middle C at zero up to the high C at positive 12. So this basically lets this keyboard control that pitch knob. All right, now we're gonna repeat that for all of the instruments. So we go, here's our voice two. We bring up that MIDI mapping. We pick the pitch knob on the pitch control for voice two, and we press and hold down the range, low C, to high C, you're gonna hold them both down so that the mapping here says C2 through C4. Now, if you're using a controller with a different number of notes on it, if you only have one octave, right, you would go C to C, and then you would probably do zero to plus 12 or minus 12 to zero up there. But for this two octave keyboard, we're gonna go negative 12, that's one octave below, to 12, that's one octave above. All right, now without even closing this command M menu, we're gonna to go to our third instrument, 
We're going to pick the pitch knobs in the pitch control, and we're going to map it again. Low C to high C. And then set our range. One octave down to one octave up. And that's it. Close the Command M to close the MIDI mapping. You can also do that with this button up here. All right, in the upper right hand corner. But now, when I press these keys, you'll see that our pitch knob is changing. Okay, so let's leave it at zero for now and let's hit play and you'll hear what I mean. So as this is playing, it's playing it as written. And if I want to transfer it around the key, I can just hit other notes. We've just taken it down two steps. Now, that shifts all the notes in the clips down by two semitones, but the scale plugin makes sure and adjusts them to stay within the key of C sharp, uh, of C minor. Back up. That's how global transposition works within the key. So we're doing diatonic trans, uh, transposition within the key. Now, let me show you something fun. So that's useful, okay? This will let you apply chord progressions to your patterns, right? So if you're doing a jam and you build up a pattern, okay, and you've got that and it's going, it's great. Maybe that pattern is all sort of roots and fifths and it's a pattern in the key of C minor, but you wanna play with a chord progression. You wanna do something with a little more energy. Uh, maybe you searched the internet and you found some chord progressions that are people, uh, people were suggesting. They said, oh, you're working in C minor? Try this chord progression, okay? And maybe they said, let's see if I can find it. Here we go. They said, here, here's a list of popular chord progressions in the key of C minor. Now this is available over at Hook Theory. Um, you can go check out that out. It's a free resource, but they also have some paid services. I am not sponsored. I'm not advocating them. I don't know if they're good or not, but I do know that this information is useful. So, and it's free, so check it out. These are all chord progressions that are popular, commonly heard, in the key of C minor. I looked this up on the website and I've got them here. Now you'll notice that these chord progressions have the chord names, okay? But for us, for what we're doing, that's less important. What's more important to us is the numbers underneath, okay? So that's, these are Roman numerals, one, four, five, one. This one is one, seven, six, five. This one's one, five, six, seven. Okay, these are chord progressions in the key of C minor. Those numbers correspond to the numbers in the key, right? So if C is the root of the key, it's one. And then if we go up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're back at one again. And you can go backwards as well, counting down. If this is one, this is seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all right? So if I wanna use, let's say I wanna use this first chord progression, I'll hit play. All right, this is playing the one. The next part of the progression is to play the four, so that's this one. Now we're in playing the four part of that chord progression. And now the five, and then it goes back to one again. And I could do the one up here, or the one here, or the one down there. Let's try a different chord progression. Let's do this middle one here. It goes one, five, six, seven. Ready? So we'll start with one, Five, six, seven, one, five, six, seven, and then back to one. So you can use these chord progressions and transpose your patterns to follow the chord progressions by using global transposition. It's that easy. All right, so get yourself an external controller, map the controller to a pitch control, have a scale plugin behind it, all right, that constrains your transpo transpositions to the key you're in, and go nuts, all right? Uh, have, a good, uh, have a good time with that, right? So that's basically you can, whatever your mechanism for jamming is or building songs, 
or, or just exploring and experimenting when you're composing, doing global transpositions of chord progressions, applying them to your patterns is A, a lot of fun, um, and B, really easy to do, all right? All you need is that extra controller. Um, really, that's it. It was super fast today. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, and as always, you've been watching Synth Seeker. Have a great weekend.